Hello everyone, hope you all are doing well. So in this video, we'll discuss the third problem of lead code by weekly contest 94. It's a medium level problem, but you can see uh, the accuracy shows that it's relatively tougher than the other medium level problems that you get. So we have over 5000 submissions and just 462 are accepted. So let's see what the problem is asking us to do. So the problem name is minimize the maximum of two arrays. Okay, so you, we have two arrays ARR1 and ARR2 which are initially empty. So you need to add positive integers to them such that they satisfy all the following conditions. Okay, what are those conditions? The first condition is ARR1 contains these many, these many distinct positive integers, each of which is not divisible by divisor one. Okay. Similarly, ARR of two contains unique count two distinct positive integers, each of which is not divisible by divisor two no integer is present in both of the arrays okay these are the three conditions arr1 contains these many distinct integers such that none of them are divisible by divisor 1 similarly for arr2 okay so given divisor 1 divisor 2 unique count 1 unique count 2 return the minimum possible maximum integer that can be present in the array okay so we try to put the minimum elements in both of the array and then we tell that what is the maximum integer that is present in either of the array okay and we want to minimize the maximum possible value right let's look into some of the examples to so divisor one is this divisor two is this and this so it's it means that in arr1 you need one value which is not divisible by two okay so in arr1 you have kept one okay in arr2 you need three distinct values which are not divisible by seven so what you will do you have already consumed one so you put two three and four and in this case what is the this is array one this is array two what is the maximum value four so you return four there is not there is by any chance we cannot reduce this four okay because we have picked up the minimum four values what about this one it says arr one needs to have two distinct values which are not divisible by three so in arr one we can have one and two arr two needs to have one distinct value which is not divis divisible by five so we can put three so here three is the maximum value we return three now let's see one more case in rr1 we need eight distinct values which are not divided by two so one three five seven nine eleven thirteen right fifteen one two three four five six seven yeah eight so eight values are there and the second array needs two values which are not divided by four so what are the values that we can put so one is already consumed what about two yes we can keep it three is already consumed what about four no four is divisible what about five no what about six yes these are the two arrays okay and what is the maximum value 15 so 15 is our answer right so i hope the the explanation is clear right and let's look into the constraints so the constraints are the values can be pretty large you can see here uh, 10 raised to power 9 10 raised to power 9 and also uh, here you can see the number of divisors the value of a divisor can go up to 10 raised to power 5 okay um, also uh, there is one thing to note here is the number of elements that we may need is unique count 1 and unique count 2 and the sum of these is 10 raised to power 9 okay so this is something that we need to do right so let's first uh, go into the intuition part as to what could be what could be uh, a possible value okay what could be a possible solution so just see here the number of divisors that we need is 10 raised to power 9 so that means we are not going to construct the array that is for sure okay that is for sure so any algorithm which is big o of n is not gonna run okay what about an algorithm which runs in less time so the, the another possibility could be big of log n with some base maybe two or something like this two three anything so that means logarithmic because linear will not run here right so no need to go above linear let's come down so logarithmic so just see here how can we find what could be a logarithmic algorithm so one of the things that we can see is sort of uh, binary search maybe right binary search is logarithmic but where do we apply binary search okay so just see here we are greedily picking up these small values here right we'll go into the different intuitions right we are greedily picking up these small values okay also it says that 
the number of unique numbers that we need in both of the arrays 10 to the power 9 okay the sum of those distinct integers can be some uh, 10 to the power 9 so that means at max i may need this number right so why not pick up a value the intuition could be something like let's pick up a value x and see that whether this value x is satisfying our answer or not what are the conditions the conditions are that all the values in arr1 are less than x okay less than or equal to x uh, and uh, it has unique count one distinct integers which are not which are not divisible by divisor one how do we check that we'll see that okay similarly is x satisfying the condition such that values in arr2 are not divisible by divisor 2 and the total values are uc2 greater than or equal to uc2 because even if that is greater than uc2 that means okay i can reduce x so x x can be one of my possible candidates so i can move on the left hand side so that means if x is my answer all the values above x will be my answer so i can apply a binary search here right so here i get an intuition so here you can see this is my code now let's move into some other details okay what are the other details so let's consider a range from 1 to n right 1 to n there is a range so just see if i want to find the number the the count of numbers which are divisible by a value x so what what will it be it will be n divided by x meaning from 1 to n i will have n divided by x divisors of x right but what do i need to find i need to find the numbers which are not divisors of x so what i mean to say if i pick a range from 1 to n okay and a number x here it will be divisor 1 and divisor 2 so what i do i check that how many divisors how many numbers are divisible by divisor 1 so that will be n by divided by 1 n divided by d1 so how many numbers are not divisible by uh, d1 it will be n minus n divided by d1 these are divisible these are total numbers so it will be so these are the count of numbers which are not divisible by d1 similarly these are the count of numbers which are not divisible by d2 okay these are the two things now what are the numbers that are divisible by both so i have two numbers d1 and d2 what are the numbers that are divided that are divisible by both it will be if i find the lcm of these two numbers that means lcm is a number the smallest number smallest multiple of these two numbers so i can do something like l divided by lcm so these are the numbers between 1 to m which are divided by both d1 and d2 so what are the numbers just opposite of this what are the numbers uh, which are not divided by d1 and d2 so it will be n minus simple stuff right three similar things so now what i can do what are the conditions i can check i can check that for a particular value suppose x capital x if i want to find whether x satisfy my condition or, or not so what i'll do i'll find the count of numbers which are not divisible by d1 i will find the count of numbers which are not divisible by d2 okay and i'll find the count of numbers which are not divisible by d1 and d2 right these are the numbers which are not divisible by d1 and d2 simple so these are the three things that i calculate just see this is my code this is my code so what i do here let me just erase it so that it becomes clear let me just erase it oh now it will become clear yeah now it's yeah so now just see what is my code whatever logic i've explained to you so this is my main function here i'll apply a binary search l and r are my two variables l starts from one r starts from two into 10 to the power nine why because the maximum value that can i, I can have is 10 to the power nine so what i've done i've taken twice of this so that even if this is my answer um right so I, i've just taken a decent bigger value that's the main thing okay answer is initially is initialized by r because it's a big value that's it what is the lcm of these two numbers so lcm of two numbers is a into b divided by gcd of this is lcm of how do you find gcd of ab a standard function okay i'm not going to, going into the details of this you find all this then you run a loop while l is less than equal to r you find the midpoint that is l plus r by 2 and 
and find the three values x, y, and z. The three values that I explained to you. So x is basically the num the, num the count of numbers which are not divisible by d one. Y is the count of numbers not divisible by d two, and z is the number of count of numbers which are not divisible by by d one and d two. So just check if x one is less than u u one. That means I have not found the um, I'm I'm not able to find the exact uh, the, the exact count that I need, right? Because I need u one numbers, but I've just found x one x. So if so, that means this is not satisfied. Similarly, y is less than u two. That means I need u two numbers, but I've just found y. So this still is not satisfied. And what what about the third one? The third one says the total number of numbers that I need is u one plus u two. Okay, but how many numbers have i find which are not divisible by d1 or d2 that is z so even if z is less than u1 plus u2 then also it is not satisfied so i mean to say if any of the condition fails then that means i need to if this was my range so this range is not valid i and suppose this was my mid so if this mid is not satisfied i start searching in this one so then l equals to mid plus 1 and if all these three are satisfied, that means the current mid is a valid value. I find the min of my answer and the mid value because I want to find the minimum maximum value, minimum possible value that satisfies my condition. So I update my answer and then R equals to mid minus one because I shrink my range. So this was my range. This was my mid. This is a valid point. So now my range will be this. So hence R becomes mid minus one. Right. Finally, after this loop is over, you return your answer. Right. But this is for typecasting things. Right. So yeah that's it for this problem um uh, uh, i would say it was a uh, more of a mathematical problem uh, and and uh, people very much versed with the mathematical approaches will be uh, able to solve it pretty easily and again there are some uh, tricky cases as well because if you do not typecast it well then uh, what happens is you 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 can get some overflow in values you can get some wrong values so yeah a number of tricks are there in this question i would say but that comes by practice overall the intuition for this problem was that the range that you are given the constraint that you are given you cannot apply a linear algorithm so you move to a logarithmic one and then in when you when you know that okay what you need to apply you just see that okay how i can apply it right so yeah that's it for this problem even the fourth problem of this contest is i would say much more mathematical that they should give because that was based on fermat theorem i have uploaded a video for the same so you can go and check that as well so yeah today's contest has been very much mathematical i would say but yeah i hope you enjoyed it um in case you have any queries do mention that in the comments also so if you like the video please do support it by giving up a thumbs up also if if this channel is useful to you uh please do subscribe to it and i'll see you in the uh, next videos. Bye-bye.